Hey guys, part two um, of the previous video I did about the um, your morning, you can't see the blessing right in front of you. But I wanted to make this a separate video because it's so good and I just need to get this out. So I'm gonna share the second dream that I had. And this is a dream that I had last night. Today is March 25th, I had this dream last night. And um, basically my friend group does uh, worship nights, right? So in my dream, we were having worship night and we were doing it at like this one of my church from like my childhood that, I, that my family used to go to and so in the dream um i had boots on <laughs> these boots actually oops. i had these boots on and but i didn't have any socks on with it and so i was like oh like i want to go get socks for my car right so i go to my car in the parking lot and i, I get in the back seat because i knew like the socks in the back seat so i get in the back seat and all of a sudden i see a snake slithering up the window and it, the snake was so small. The snake was so small. So itty bitty. The snake was small. And I was like, um, I started screaming because I had, in the dream, this wasn't happening, but in the dream I had a memory of a snake and there was a small, a small slip open that the snake could peep its head through. And it just like wiggled its head. It peeped its head through. Even though the snake was so small. It was so small, but it, it peeped its head through. And I was like, um, I was screaming and I saw my phone had 11%. I'm like, I gotta call somebody for help. I gotta call somebody for help. I'm like, I'm screaming. I'm like, somebody help me. Somebody help me. Yet the snake couldn't get in. I was never in danger, but I was screaming for help. And so, hold on. I need to get my, my notes on my phone so I can read it to you guys. Okay. I got my iPad so that I can share. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to the part where, where I said... Okay. So I said... So that's why I was scared and I was screaming. And then people inside came to try and kill the snake. They had a balloon with the, with flour in it. So, you know, like, just like like cooking flour, right? So, like, how people make a stress ball. You know how people put flour, like, in the balloon, which I thought is significant, where I, I honestly don't really know if, what that part has to do with this. If anyone wants to try to interpret in the comments or, interpret, you know, go ahead. Um, but it was oak, so I'm going to explain what it looked like. So, basically, you know how people make a stress ball? So, you know the shape of a banana split. Oh, or a banana like it's like that so it's it's this shape and it has flour but it looks like someone had taken a knife and cut it through so it's half of it so it's half of this and they're trying to get this to you know to put on the snake um so they kept trying to hit and cover the snake but that wasn't killing the snake it was just covering it the snake couldn't touch me yet i was still scared and i think that's a word for me and i think that's a word for somebody out there too that the snake couldn't touch me yet i was still scared I've been having a lot of dreams where Satan tries to touch me, Satan tries to to throw these things to attack me, and yet, in the past dreams, I haven't been scared, but for some reason in this dream, he couldn't touch me, yet I was still scared because I had a memory of the door that I had once cracked open. So the snake was literally the size of a worm, it was pink, it was small, and it kept trying to find an entrance through a window into my car, and I was screaming and kept calling for help and waiting for people to come and kill it when I should have just trusted God. I was never in danger. Someone finally got the balloon flower thing sack to hit the snake and it landed on top of him. And I got out the other side of my car and ran, and I remember someone came up to me after and was like, why didn't you just trust God? And I was like, honestly, I don't know. So this is where I said my, interpreta my interpretation of the dream. Tighten up any cracks that might be open or have the potential to get slightly open. Don't be afraid. In every dream that I had, Satan tries to attack and he can't touch me. I have a hedge of protection over me. I'm covered under the blood of Jesus. And so I want to encourage someone with this word and say, stop opening doors that need to stay closed. That's something that the Lord told me a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, to stop opening doors that need to stay closed. And so it's like with the window, I was scared because I had remembered a window that I had once cracked open, that the window was once cracked open. That's why the, the snake's head could get open. And honestly, I've had several dreams about that where I've been in a house or whatever and a door, there is demons waiting to, to be let in, but they couldn't be let in. And so stop letting Satan get an entrance into your life. He's looking for windows. He's looking for a small crack. So don't let Satan get that crack into your life. You have to stop. You have to release the bondages that are coming. Satan has no hold or stronghold over you but you have to stop opening doors stop letting little cracks come through that Satan can try to attack you with that because he's waiting for that one moment and honestly it happened I got tempted this morning I hadn't been tempted in a while I got tempted and it's like I almost opened the door but I remembered that I had that dream and I was like don't open the door that needs to stay closed don't let that window come don't let don't give Satan entrance because he's looking for a small crack I remember the window I'm gonna show you my window I remember the crack was where is it 
it was can you even see that it was that small but the snake was so small that in in my memory the snake's head could peep through that much but it couldn't get in all the way but that small is all it takes so stop letting satan have entrances into your life stop giving him authority that he doesn't have god has the authority stop giving to satan but you know what you need to do to stop allowing that is to get into your word because i promise you get staying in my word is what's helped me so much if you're struggling stay in your word because that's where god is going to give you hold on let me get my little journal this be everything this is where i do spend my time with god See, this is where I wrote, stop opening doors that need to be closed. I said that on, oh, I guess I didn't put the date. But anyways, oh, don't look at me, record. They're not even looking, so what? Okay, anyways, um, I, I even said in this, what doors have you reopened, good or bad? Because there are some doors that it's like, guys, you know, but what doors have you reopened? And what doors do you need to close? That's what I wrote down. I was going to talk about that within the Bible study group. Um, but anyways, oh, why am I so focused? I should be focused on the Lord. Anyways. Um, okay. So I do my devotions and I talk about... Um, I like to make my notes look cute. I kind of like to like romanticize it. You know what I'm saying? Type vibe. Like it helps me focus. I really don't like they're in front of me. I feel awkward. Give me a second to breathe. I'll be funny. I, I was looking down because I was trying not to make eye contact with them. And I was so focused on um, being embarrassed that I didn't even notice that they had already left. Is that not the word from last time? Okay, anyway, this is what it looks like. I like to make it look cute, you know what I'm saying, type vibe. So I'm going to show you guys. So, and I'm going to explain another dream that I had in this the day before. So I said, studying scripture, Matthew. So Matthew 4, 1 through 3. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these, stores, tell these stones to become bread. So first I said, I think it's funny how in the verse they said he was hungry. They said he was hungry so nonchalant. Like, Jesus didn't eat for 40 days and nights. Like, that's a huge deal. Of course he's hungry. <laughs> and then I said, they referred to Satan as a tempter. So the side note on my Bible is said, Jesus himself was tempted to sin. What three temptations did the devil present to Jesus? Knowing, um, and then it said, knowing how to, had, knowing how Jesus responded, how can you be prepared to defend yourself against the devil's attack? Then I felt the Lord say, prepare for battle. I put that in quotation marks, prepare for battle. And I said, that's what I just felt. God is warning me. I had a dream last night that I was tempted to watch porn. And I almost gave in, but I started praying and my alarm went off and I woke up. That was like in the dream, you know, after I started praying in the dream. Naughty prepare. Spiritual warfare is coming. Fight different this time. There's power in prayer. The next few weeks, wake up at 6 a.m. every day to pray. Despite what you feel, it's crucial. Put on the full armor of God. Prepare for battle. Knowing this doesn't make me scared. I have God by my side. Actually, I almost feel bad for Satan. The battle is already worn. Satan is a punk. Okay, I need to keep reading to see how Jesus responded. So I said, Jesus' first response was scripture, the word of truth. Satan tries to use scripture against him to tempt him. That, and I said, that that's actually almost clever, that he used scripture to try to, you know. I said, Jesus combated it with scripture right away. All this I will give you is Satan's favorite line. Every temptation, Jesus responded with scripture. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And so that stuck out, stood out to me so much because it's like Satan ultimately tested and tried to tempt Jesus so hard. Jesus, literally Jesus. And I think that we really need to take note of how Jesus fights this temptation. He fights it with scripture. So if Jesus uses scripture to fight off the temptations. Why would we not use scripture to fight off temptation? Why would we not use, he's giving us the resources. He tells us how to fight our battles. He, he's giving us all the knowledge that we need to, to, to beat this. And it's like, we don't want to open the word. And I remember I used to just like, I used to not like reading the Bible. I would get bored and all this stuff. But it's like, I'm going to give you guys a few tips. One, pray before you read the Bible and ask God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, to reveal um, to reveal himself to you. Ask him to reveal revelation, to just give you clarity, to understand. That's one thing that I always pray for is, is clarity and understanding revelation. Because I'm like, I, and I will look up the most basic words. Even today, um, I was reading the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew and I looked up, uh, I don't know what B2 meant. I looked up what blessed meant. I looked up what, um, 
I looked up what morning means. I looked up what uh, what meek means. I look up anything. I look up any word so I can understand deeper knowledge of what it is. And through that, I'm, I'm learning and I'm studying so that I can fully understand. And when you have thy word hidden in your heart, put on the full armor of God. But I just want to encourage you guys, you know, this video, this is not perfect. I'm not used to doing, you know, whatever. I just want to encourage you guys to read your Bible and stop opening doors that need to stay closed. Just don't do it, sweetie. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't let me get excited now. Don't do it. Because why are you opening doors that need to stay closed? And I get that it's hard. Trust me, I believe it's hard. When I tell you guys my memories on Snapchat, child! Boy, like, bruh. Oh, I was wilded. Literally wild. Like, just last year was just so bad. Like, but just the transformation that I've had. Like, and also, like, when I said the whole lukewarm Christian phase, like, I was just not living right at all. And it was just not cute. It was not cute. Like, it's just so sad because I remember feeling so depressed last year. And I was doing all these things to cope with my feeling of depressed when I could have just gone to God. You know, and it's like when you mess up, the first thing you think is, oh, I can't tell God. But that's a tactic of Satan to try to keep you in bondage just to tell you that you can't go to God. Go to God first. He will comfort you in it. He will comfort you in it. Now, this year, when I've messed up, immediately I read my Bible. I may not want to. I may not feel like it, but immediately I read my Bible and I always feel better after. Even if something convicts me, I always feel better after. I always feel comforted after. I always feel loved after. And that's God. So... I doubt myself even right now. I'm doubting. Oh my gosh, I did I post this? Uh, and don't compare yourself, Nadia. Okay? You post what the Lord has told you to post. Mm. And that's my confidence. In the name of Jesus. I will post what God wants me to post. Therefore, have a good day. Bye.